In today's video, I'm going to be finishing up my workup from salicylic acid to methyl salicylate. I will be highlighting the method used, which is the Fischer esterification, and describe a little bit about what's going on during the reaction. Methyl salicylate is an ester, which is responsible for its aroma of wintergreen. In nature, almost all smells from flowers or trees come from esters. This video has been on my to-do list for a while now, and I'm happy to finally be able to do it. With all of that being said, let's get started. The first thing we'll do is add 15 grams of salicylic acid to a round bottom flask. I extracted this salicylic acid from acetosalicylic acid, which is the active ingredient in aspirin. That also means though the overall purity of my salicylic acid has not been tested, so I'm really just hoping for the best. After that, we'll add about 80 milliliters of methanol. I'm using 95% methanol for this project, which should work just fine. However, lower grades of methanol will work too. As long as it's above 80-ish percent, you would be fine. Following this, I add in my stir bar. From here, we dissolve all of the salicylic acid into the methanol, and this only takes about 60 seconds. It's really neat to see some of the salicylic acid start to turn yellow here, and this means that the reaction has already started taking place. For the next part, I will add 20 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid, and we must do this slowly. The reaction between methanol and sulfuric acid is very exothermic due to the water in the methanol. This can cause it to spontaneously boil off if added too quick. Luckily, besides boiling, I got my hands on a thermal camera that I can show this reaction in a little bit of a different light. We can see that as I add in the sulfuric acid, the methanol quickly goes from cool to almost boiling in seconds. This is really neat to watch on a thermal camera because you don't really get to see this too often. As I add my last little bit of acid, we see the mixture go from yellow to almost white. Once the acid has been charged into the flask, I'll set up a condenser on top of my flask and I'll reflux the solution for about an hour and 10 minutes. The purpose of this is to keep the solution at max temperature without losing the solvent. Refluxing is an extremely important method used to do this. During this time, I will talk a little bit about what's going on. Earlier I mentioned that this reaction highlights a Fischer esterification. The salicylic acid reacts with the methanol, catalyzed and sped up by the sulfuric acid, and creates methyl salicylate and water. The methanol's oxygen reacts primarily with the carbon of the salicylic acid. The hydrogen of the methanol is unaffected by this reaction and gets donated to the salicylic acid OH grouping. This creates H2O which then moves into solution. Acids are often used as catalysts because they're full of extra hydrogens, which speeds up the overall reaction. Once refluxing is complete, I raise the flask and we can see it's still refluxing slightly. Then we just need to wait for it to cool. Now we need to remove about half of the overall methanol in the solution. To do this, I set up a simple distillation in which I know my methanol has the lowest boiling point and will be boiled off first. We can see crystal clear methanol coming over, however it still has a strong odor of methyl salicylate so I can't just add it back into my stock. After the distillation was completed, we can see a small layer of methyl salicylate on top of the methanol. I take out my stir bar and prepare for the next step. Now we need to separate the solutions and to do that I empty everything into a separatory funnel. I start by washing my round bottom flask twice with 30 milliliters of ice cold water. The purpose of this is to transfer any methyl salicylate that wasn't transferred over. And we can see from both rinsings there's a surprising amount of oil left in the flask. Also ice cold water must be used because the reaction between water and sulfuric acid is extremely exothermic and the ice water will help to combat this. From here, I shake, cap, and continuously vent the solution. Remember, there is still an amount of unreacted sulfuric acid in their solution somewhere, so we always have to be careful and vent the separatory funnel. I let everything then sit for 15 minutes to separate. The methyl salicylate and the unreacted salicylic acid is on the bottom layer, while the water, methanol, and most of the sulfuric acid prefer the top layer. 
The unreacted salicylic acid actually clogged my separatory funnel, which made it a little slow for everything to drain. Once again, I transferred my methyl salicylate into the separatory funnel, and now I will neutralize the remaining sulfuric acid with a saturated solution of sodium carbonate. These two washings will each be carried out with 50 milliliters of water and 5 grams of sodium carbonate dissolved into each of them. Again, we will cap, shake, and vent. However, with an acid-base reaction happening to neutralize, a lot of CO2 will be generated, and it is important to vent frequently. This time, draining is much easier and I drain everything into the same flask as before. I also drain all of the water and the other junk into the same beaker I did before. However, this time there was some CO2 being generated because there was still some acid in the beaker from last time. I finally do one last washing step with sodium carbonate and it's the exact same thing we just saw. From here, I drain my crude methyl salicylate into a round bottom flask and all of the water into the waste flask. If I wanted pure methyl salicylate, I would still need to distill this further. The only issue with this is I only have plastic clips for my distillation setup, and when I started to distill it, they melted before anything distilled over. This is because methyl salicylate distills at over 220 C, and that's 428 degrees Fahrenheit. For this reason, I decide to filter it through a 200 micron filter until I buy some metal clamps online. So at the end, we have about 4.5 milliliters of filtered crude methyl salicylate, and I think that will hold my interest over on this subject for a while. Though there have been some other methods of doing this, and I want to eventually get around and compare these methods on yield, time, and purity. Though that will be for another day. All of these videos, including this one, are supported by my Patreons. They're an awesome group of people that help support my videos and also get their names at the end of all of my videos, plus they get to see my videos a day early. Finally, we can see all of the videos I'm currently working on here. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.